It's all very mysterious. In 2021, Polish sources indicated that an agreement had been reached in which Nintendo would put a significant amount of money into Forever Entertainment to produce games specifically for the Nintendo Switch. I saw a lot of speculation at the time that this could be a way for Nintendo to bring some of their deeper cut franchises back from the brink onto the Nintendo Switch, but three years later, it's still all quiet, even as the Switch is entering its twilight years. So how did this deal originate? What did it cover? What happened to it? And what is happening next? Are we going to see a suite of first-party remakes coming down the chute? Or is there something quite different taking place? It's time to deep dive the mysterious relationship between Nintendo and Forever Entertainment. So first, let's start with the original story of this partnership. The news was announced on many Nintendo websites such as Nintendo Life, but tracking back this news story to the source, it seems that this was from a notification to the Financial Supervisory Authority of Poland, a regulatory authority. Presumably then, the amount that Nintendo invested in forever, described only as significant, was consequential enough that it required regulatory notification. That said, forever seems to publish more or less everything that happens to them in the same way anything that could have even the mildest financial bearing, so we're not necessarily talking about a world-changing amount of cash here. Also, the term significant is very relative. Forever Entertainment has a market capitalization of $20.67 million as of April 2024. Nintendo's is $65.3 billion. What's a significant stake for Forever is a rounding error for Nintendo, and as with the Sega deal in 2021, an announcement was made that several Square Enix titles were reported to Switch. Here, the wording was a lot more specific than the Nintendo report. They started again by referring to it as a significant agreement between Forever Entertainment and Square Enix Japan. Then they clarified, the purpose of the agreement is to create and release several remakes of single IP games owned by Square Enix Japan. The name of this IP will be made public in a separate report as soon as the global marketing campaign begins. Remakes of all games will include new graphics, but the gameplay and script will remain consistent with the original version. The exact release dates of all games will be communicated in separate current reports. For its share in the project, Forever Entertainment will receive a significant part of the revenue, over 50% from each copy sold of the game on all platforms. Well, that gives us at least an idea of what they might consider to be significant, which is absolutely significant. Acquiring classic IPs, it continues, and creating new productions or remakes on their basis is one of the important directions of the company's development, whose effectiveness has been confirmed by the success of Panzer Dragoon Remake. The company will cover the costs associated with the implementation of the above contract from their own funds. And it's not even just Sega and Square Enix that Forever Entertainment are in bed with. Their website boasts currently Forever Entertainment has over 50 business partners from around the world and has released a total of over 80 games on seven different platforms. They boast that as a partner of indie developers, they collaborate with co-creating, porting and publishing video games to consoles, including the Nintendo Switch. Just in March 2024, they signed an agreement with Creepy Jar Games. They have managed to place their title Timberman vs. on the Nintendo Switch in China, no easy feat, given China's tight regulation, which limits the amount of games that can be published considerably. And of their passion for remakes, Forever Entertainment CEO Big Nev Debeki chatted with premier Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu in 2023. The question Famitsu asked was, there have been a lot of remake projects in Japan recently, Previously, the Fear Effect reinvented remake was announced, but are the number of non-Japanese remakes also on the rise? Debiki responded, At the moment, we are working with IP holders and their teams on continuing to make adjustments to various non-Japanese IP remakes. I think the number of foreign remakes will increase from here, but I'm personally a fan of Japanese games and want to release more and more Japanese remakes. There are really too many titles I want to release. Even narrowing it down just to 10 would be difficult, he laughed. Well, I think that even during this year, we'll be able to announce a new remake, he continued, so players can look forward to that. 
But based on that quote, it sounds like there are a lot of options still on the table. So what is going on here? First of all, remakes are clearly an area that forever want to specialize in and the Sega games are just two canaries down the mine of this development plan. They seem to be building relationships across Japan with companies offering them this opportunity. But why would a Japanese company go to a not especially well regarded Polish firm for this? Well, following on the coattails of CD Projekt Red, Poland has become a regional hub for game developers. On the Warsaw Stock Exchange, there are dozens of video game companies, with commentators noting that only Tokyo has more gaming companies on its stock exchange. As well as a large and ever-growing skill base, it has relatively low operating costs and a number of key players, not just Forever and Project Red, but simulator game developer 10 Square Games and Steam publisher Playway. Certainly for low-budget remakes, which have low margins anyway, Poland makes a lot of sense as a basis for developers. So, are the Nintendo releases on ice, awaiting revelations? Well, while I'd love to imagine that this deal is presaging the triumphant return of Chibi Robo and a Star Tropics remake, I suspect there might be quite a different explanation. Note the wording of the original statement, aims to release several titles on Nintendo Switch from the Forever Entertainment publishing plan. It's not an ambiguously worded release, and it is markedly different from the Square Enix press release, which was very specific about the plan to remake titles. This was support for existing games on Forever Entertainment Slate, including potentially Square Enix's titles, which Nintendo have often had a hand in helping to publish before, with titles like Octopath Traveler being launched internationally under the Kyoto Company's banner. Why would Nintendo offer support to Forever just to get their games onto the Nintendo Switch system? Presumably, it would be if they thought Forever Entertainment had the capacity to port and localize titles that were beyond the ability of the original developers to port and localize, particularly if those developers were their Nindy partners. The independent scene has been a huge source of revenue and acclaim for the Switch. There are many cross-platform indies that have rocketed to success on the Switch. Where would we be without classics like Celeste, Undertale, Stardew Valley, A Short Hike, and Yoku's Island Express. By making it easier for developers to bring their games to Switch, Nintendo has a chance to outcompete Sony and Microsoft in this space because the portable nature of the console gives it a natural advantage. This is completely in keeping with Nintendo's more independent focused approach in recent years. This article from 2019 in Time Magazine gives an insight into their hunger to develop these relationships. Nigel Lowry, the co-founder of publisher Devolver Digital, stated it has become very clear when the Switch came out, Nintendo, who have been really fantastic since, had started reaching out aggressively. They were contacting us, other devs, other pubs, engaging with us at PAX and GDC, making a conscious effort to see what we were up to, and to this day are pretty active in checking in to see what we have coming and working to promote our games side by side with their games, which is impressive to see. This level of activity clearly paid dividends and I feel like the connection with Forever Entertainment likely is an expansion of this level of initiative. Remember, Nintendo has worked more closely with indie developers before, notably shunting indie titles Good Job on the stretchers out themselves as a publisher on Switch. They also appear to have played Matchmaker previously with the developers Brace Yourself Games benefiting on Crypto the Necrodancer, Cadence of Hyrule, from the input of Japanese devs and long-standing Nintendo allies, Spike Chunsoft. This fits a pattern. The Time article also notes something very important and another reason why Nintendo wants to capitalize on this scene. There's an intangible element to it all, Larry stated. People just want to see their game on a Nintendo platform because they grew up and still to this day love Nintendo platforms. There's an emotional aspect that's really fulfilling. Forever Entertainment may appear to be overextended, their slate may be full of delays, but they also do have consistent successes in terms of bringing games from platform to platform, bringing back old games and pushing them into new markets. They are also in an area of the world that is growing as a game development hub, and so a Nintendo investment makes a lot of sense. Plus, while the surfeit of announcements and yet lack of actual games may seem to be frustrating, I'm not sure it's purely a case of forever being merchants of vaporware. Their business model seems to be to be highly diversified with dozens of smaller projects concurrently 
dozens of smaller contracts with larger publishers, and this does make sense as a way to insulate themselves against the ups and downs of particularly the AAA games industry, where at the end of 2023, about 100 CD Projekt Red employees were laid off. However, am I missing the big story here? Is it the case that, as many speculated, Forever could be working on F-Zero or Chibi Robo? I think, sadly, no. While giving Forever an infusion of cash that is modest to Nintendo, but sizable to Forever to grease the wheel of their Nintendo Switch and indie scene does seem in keeping with the way Nintendo operates, Nintendo has also been incredibly choosy about their IPs, even with remakes. Now, they have allowed smaller studios to work on their franchises before. Arta Piazza did Super Mario RPG, although this is probably due to their long-standing relationship with Square Enix, while Way Forward got the nod for the wonderful Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 reboot camp. Forever Entertainment is still a significant player, and I could certainly see a Nintendo link-up happening in the future, especially if they prove their worth with the ports they're currently doing for Sega and Square Enix. Because of their closeness with Sega and their understanding of the Sega tech, they could be a particularly good developer to port over the Sega-developed F-Zero GX, and to me, that remains the most likely port they're working on if they are working on one at all. But this current announcement shows no sign to me that this is happening, and given how specific most of these announcements are, I feel a larger collaboration with Nintendo would have been mentioned even if the big end themselves forced them to be very cagey about the specifics. So based on this, I'm going to say with a 90% forecast certainty that there will be no Nintendo IP remake by Forever Entertainment released by the end of 2025. After that, who knows, as theoretically a deal could be struck tomorrow with a short turnaround time, although the sad wait for Panzer Dragoon's Vi suggests that even a short turnaround could lead to a very long wait indeed. Still, I will be keeping an eye on Forever and hoping against hope that if they don't partner with Nintendo, they nevertheless keep raiding the Sega Saturn's immense and high quality back catalogue for future remakes. And I do expect Forever Entertainment to make good on their deal and eventually be publishing a lot more Nintendo Switch games, just ones that are chiefly from the indie scene. Thank you so much for watching to the end and why not check out these videos on screen right now, which contain some deep dives into other companies associated with Nintendo. Please also whack the like button for me and I will see you next time for another Nintendo forecast.